Good morning. My name is Chris Brown. I'm a resources consultant for Morgans and I'm here to talk to you about the resources sector in 2016. It's been a very tough start to the year and today has been no exception with the leaders in the resources sector falling and uh, I guess BHP the largest now under $15. The focus has been on China, both the recent past and the outlook for the, for the future. And I guess this is exemplified by the fall in the iron ore price. If we actually look at what happened last year to iron ore consumption into China, um, imports were down 2.2 per cent to nine, touch over 957 million tonnes. So obviously uh, there is a slowdown. Of course, we don't know how much of that has gone into stockpiles and how much of that has gone into steel production. But that overall figure suggests that China is slowing down. If we look at some of the other figures out of China, we're now getting figures for the first 11 months of the year. And we can see, for example, that uh, electricity consumption in secondary industry is down 1.1%. So this has been offset, of course, by an increase in residential electricity consumption in the first 11 months of 4.7 and an increase in primary industry consumption around 3%. So there are some symptoms and signs of growth as well as some symptoms and signs of slowdown. In terms of power consumption, um, thermal coal imports, and it's only a small part of the thermal coal that China uses, thermal coal imports are down about 19% percent to a touch over 200 million tonnes. So there, as you can see, there is a general slowdown. The market's assuming that this is going to continue through 2016. It's going to result in a reduction in demand for commodities at a time when con production of commodities uh, is expected to increase from the heavy levels of capital expenditure that we've seen in the last few years. This is particularly evident in iron ore and it is less evident, but still evident, in some of the base metals. The areas where we are seeing rapid growth is in some of the less common uh, metals or elements that are used, and uh, the demand for lithium is one of these, where lithium consumption generally is increasing, and lithium consumption for batteries is increasing quite dramatically, with most commodity commentators talking about a demand increase of 20%. The other sector that's been holding up well is the gold sector. In Australia, even with a US price under $1,100 an ounce, the Australian dollar price is a touch over 1500 which for most Australian producers gives them a good margin with an all-in sustaining cost at or under $1,000 Australian an ounce and a product value of plus $1,500 an ounce. The one sector that has held up and held up broadly, and again within that, there are some individual stocks that you need to look at. Some of them have dividend policies which they've been able to sustain. In particular, Evolution has a dividend policy of 2% of the value of gold which it sells. This is one of the larger and faster growing Australian gold stocks with a portfolio of producing operations. Another one with a good dividend policy is Regis Resources. It had some operational issues in 2014 with some flooding of one of its pits and some underperformance of its operations, but this has now been recovered and operational performance has been restored. The gold production has increased, the margin has increased, the company has returned to a dividend policy paying six cents in September of last year for the last half of the 2015 year. So these well-performed stocks with a portfolio of producing assets, a reasonable margin in terms of profit and a strong dividend policy represent good investment value for shareholders.